Hello, what is up everyone? Dansby here and I want to give you a few tips if you are looking to complete the live series collection as soon as possible. If you have this game before the official launch, you're already seeing what the, what's happening on the marketplace. If you're getting this game on Tuesday at midnight, the market is going to be crazy. So I just want to go through the market really, really quickly. So I actually did something differently this year after looking at what happened to the market last year. Than I had done in previous years, like actually really paying attention to. The thing that I had noticed was the first few days of the game, the most expensive cards are probably the cheapest they're going to be throughout the whole life cycle of the game, assuming that they still stay high diamonds or around the overalls that they are right now, that 90 plus diamond. They're going to stay, they're going to keep on increasing for quite a while. That's what happened the la that's what happened last year. And I think that's happened with previous years uh, as well. I just had not been paying that much attention to it. So I was looking at it today, and I had just been saving up my stubs. I didn't want to spend any unless I saw some upticks happening. So I had not bought any cards. I had not bought any packs. I was just playing through everything. And I had about 500,000, no, 400,000 stubs this. And I saw that Shohei had jumped up. Now, if you look at the marketplace here, it says that it is he actually went down. But it's not actually true because it's reflecting from at midnight. It's pretty sure that when it updates. So you're going to see it shoot up. And I'll just show you. Uh, same thing with Trout. Trout. Trout increased as well. And all the other diamonds, the ones that are below 90s, they actually have been going down in value, which happens as well. So let me just show you with Shohei here. So Shohei, for example, I bought him earlier today. Where is Shohei? I bought Shohei right here for 185k. Okay? Look at him now. 267k i bought him three hours ago okay three hours ago on sunday morning let's go over to trouty over here now trouty it says he's increasing and he's also continuing to increase i don't remember how much i spent from actually let's take a let's take a uh a look here how much did i uh spend on trouty Trouty, I spent two ninety nine, so he's about the same. But <laughs> he's about the same, but he is slowly increasing as well. I'm expecting when the game drops that the most expensive cards are going to continue to increase in value. So what you should do, if your if your goal is to complete the live series as soon as possible, is sell every card except for the highest overalls, the ninety pluses. And my suggestion is to save up for the two most expensive cards which so happened to be on the same team, which is Trout and Otani, which is exactly what I did. And as of now, it's looking like that is the move. Judge is the next most expensive card. Uh, he's been increasing. I saw DeGrom increased. Oh, actually, he's gone back down. Oh, no, this is where he was. He was at 108K at one point, I believe, yesterday. And I was thinking about pulling the trigger on him then, but I knew overall it would be best if I, if I saved up for Shohei and, uh, and Trouty. Now that I have the two big ones out of the way, I can just continue to save and then go down the line next. So I think the next one I'm going to probably go for is probably Judge, followed by DeGrom. And the rest of them aren't too crazy. Betts is up there, but the rest of them aren't too bad. So what you should really try to do is sell all of these other diamonds. And, and don't worry about getting the, the lower collections done. The rewards aren't that great anyway. Get the biggest rewards first, because those are the ones that are going to get more expensive. I know I it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse here, but that's going to be the best thing to do, especially if you're like me and you know money spent. So my suggestion, besides the tips I just gave you on really selling every card, collect nothing, including uh, don't buy packs as well, just try to get the most expensive cards. Another thing that you, you should really do is hop into the programs and get the programs done as quickly as possible. See, uh, and I think the first thing you should do in the programs, even though I don't find them particularly fun, is the showdowns. Go into showdowns, complete these things. Because when you complete the showdowns, you get players that have missions. And then within those missions, you, can, they have team, you get the Team Affinity missions, you get the World Baseball Classics missions, which I'm pretty close to completing this one right now and there's there's stubs that you're gonna get plus these cards are better than all the live series cards for the most part so you're gonna have better cards to play with anyway those live series cards you're not even gonna want to play with them so why hold on to them they're just gonna lose value except for the most expensive ones only spend your stubs on the most expensive cards 
period. That's if you want to complete this quickly without putting actual any actual money into the game. So I'm generally a no money spent player, or I would say probably usually a some money spent player, because usually when they drop the discounts, I will usually buy the stubs, but not spend the money then. It's the worst thing you could do, because it inflates the market. Every time that they put a stub sale, the market, everything... Uh, um, shoots up. So what you want to do then is just hold on to it, wait for it to come down, and then your stubs will gain value. So you never want to buy the sales, the stub pack sales, um, it, with the per with the uh, intention of spending on that day. Like I said, first thing you want to do, you sell everything, and then you save up for the cards that you want the most. Really, the 90 plus cards, and I would say look for the most expensive cards. I go after Trout. Shohei, Judge, those those gotta be the first three that you go after. Everything else after that, honestly, like, you know, the other 90 pluses for sure, but not as much. The, the most expensive ones are just gonna continue to increase as people are seeing that they're not pulling them. All the other diamonds, the ones that are 89 and below, the market doesn't get flooded with them when the game drops for everybody, especially with Xbox Game Pass. So those cards are all gonna crash in value. And people spending 40,000 on those now, 25,000 on them now, they're gonna be like 10,000 probably within a week. So we'll just wait on those. And that's probably your best bet to actually complete the live series collections within a week or two without putting money into the game. I know it sounds like, like a lot of people like, I, I wanna lock these cards in, but you, you lock them in, you don't get many stubs for locking them in anyway. You're better off just selling them. Especially f that the, the the lower tier cards are at their highest value that they are now. I was selling commons and bronzes, some of them for like a thousand, okay? And silvers for thousands and golds for some thousands too. They have their highest value earlier in the game, okay? They have their highest value earlier in the game, the lower value cards. Um, I'm talking about 89 and lower. Highest value there, because after a while, when you get to like mid-year... Even even the the higher 80 diamonds, they, they, they're pretty much at quick sell value or a little bit above quick sell value at that point. And then, you, like I was saying before, the most expensive cards, they are at the cheapest early games. So try to keep that in mind. Once you complete all the showdowns, and I think the next thing to tackle is Conquest. Okay, Conquest while doing all the missions that you have. Now, look at the Conquest. I've done... I've done, I've done a few of them. I've done the World Baseball Classic. I've done the Team Infinity 1 uh, for the East and the Central. I and Oh, and the West. So I did all of those. I did all the Team Infinity ones. I still need to do the main one, though, the Nation of Baseball, which I'm going to put a video out on really soon on how to complete that as quickly as possible. I did do a little Conquest video with the WBC one, uh, but this that one was a little all over the place, I, I, I have to admit. But the Nation of Baseball one is just going to be focusing on how you can do that uh, as quickly as possible, especially if you're if you don't like playing on anything that's above All Star. So there's ways to do it quickly and concisely that you're not really wasting your time, and you get through it as quickly as possible because it does take take some time. I would say most three inning games are still going to take you 10 to 15 minutes, so that's going to add up over time. It's still going to take you probably 10 hours to complete it if you don't lose anything and you go through it efficiently. Mini seasons is another way. They they totally revamp mini seasons. I haven't even gone into it yet. It's probably gonna be the last thing I do. But in mini seasons, they have little things here. You get you get a nice little diamond here. Mark Mulder. I'm very happy to see Mark Mulder. And I wonder if they're gonna bring in Tim Hudson or Barry Zito at any point. That'd be cool. But there, there's another way to get some points towards your affinity. It's gonna be the like I said. It's gonna be the last thing I do. Um, once I complete the conquest, and you can complete your missions while in this as well, and not really need to uh, worry about using those things online or ranked, or anything like that. And just to show you, I'm not full of it, I'm going to show you my binder right now. So if you look, I don't have many of these cards, four, six, five, because I kind of didn't think I should do this strategy up until I wasn't thinking about this until a few hours into the game, I was just like, oh, let me get some stubs, get me stubs, and I was like, you dope, we did this last year, and it didn't work out that well for you, so let's try something different this year, based upon what we do know from what happened with the markets last year. Okay, so I got four, six, five, two, three, eight, nine, seven, you know, low numbers until we get to the Angels. The Angels is the only collection I finished because, you know, there's a, there's a good card here to get, the Captain card. So I said, might as well, I have the two most expensive cards and nobody else here is anything. They're all cheap, mainly because these guys are, too ex are so expensive. Now, when you go to the, the teams that aren't as good... The, the guys that aren't very good either are going to be more money just because they're the toppers. Like, Actually, th these are starting to tank already. So, <laughs> 
From so if you have the game, yeah. Oh, all these are tanking hard. Dansby Swanson yesterday was going for 4K. Hunter Green was going for 7K. Oh my, they are they are tanking. So don't hold on to these cards. Sell them. Sell these cards. They're just losing value. Even the even these guys are losing value. These guys were both over 100K yesterday. So sell anything 90 and below. At 90 and below, sell it because these cards. Well, except for Mookie, he's he's continuing to go up. Mookie's going up. Machado's going down. Let's see who else is here. Judge's inc price is increasing. McClanahan's going down. J Ram. J Ram's actually he's he's the same. He's the same. Same thing with Buxton. Altuve's tanked. So yeah, aim for the big boys. That's all you gotta do. I hope this video was helpful. If it was and you enjoyed it, please do me a favor. Click that like button. Maybe think about giving me a subscription. I'm going to be posting pretty much every day, either in a video form or in a stream, because I'm really, uh, really excited about MLB The Show this year. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to catch you soon. Later.